Concern about the number of women in science, technology, engineering, and math, or STEM as, is, as it is often referred to, has been growing since the women's movement of the late 1960s and 1970s pointed out glaring discrimination in these fields. Former Harvard president, Larry Summers, commented that there may be something innate to women preventing them from doing math and science. If nothing else, he made the point that this issue is not dead. There are many theories to get more women involved in science. One is to do nothing. In this model, women need to change to accommodate the ways that science and engineering are taught. Some women do make it through, and some do not. A new spin on this is that a woman is smart enough to make it in science, she is also smart enough to choose a different career. The second path is coined by Evelyn Fox Keller, a prominent philosopher of science, is the compensatory model. Here, the Academy recognizes that women are not equally represented and makes a concerted effort to attract young, young women and senior female scientists to solve this. The model also seeks to catch girls early and get them in the STEM stream of coursework before they lose interest. The compensatory model is a good start, but is more interested in raising numbers than in, than in improving experiences. Just like it sounds, it is compensation and not systematic in approach. The last path, as outlined by Evelyn Fox Keller, is the radical overhaul of the whole system, which by definition is far more difficult, far-reaching, but potentially quite reinvigorating. As we are firmly planted in the 21st century, it is time for the STEM fields to meet the challenges of 21st century problems. Science is tremendously malleable and accepting of new theories and can use this tradition to embrace scientists who have come to the field from different points of entry.